Sufis, in this book I have attempted to write about some of the visions which God has given me. Had I considered my own inclinations, I would not have published the account of these visions during my lifetime. But friends, whose judgment I value, have but insisted that, as a spiritual help to others, the publication of the teaching of these visions should not be delayed. In deference to the wish of these friends, the book is now presented to the public at Kothgarth, K-O-T-G-A-R-H, 14 years ago while I was praying. My eyes were open to the heavenly vision. So vividly did I see it all that I thought I must have died and that my soul had passed into the glory of heaven. But throughout the intervening years, these visions have continued to enrich my life. I cannot call them up at will, but usually when I am praying or meditating, sometimes as often as eight or ten times in a month, my spiritual eyes are open to see within the heavens and for an hour or two I walk in the glory of the heavenly sphere with Christ Jesus and hold converse with angels and spirits. Their answers to my questions have provided much of the material that has been published in my books and the unutterable ecstasy of this spiritual communion makes me long for the time when I shall enter in permanently to the bliss and fellowship of the redeemed. Some may consider that these visions are merely a form of spiritualism, but I would emphasize that there is one very essential difference. Spiritualism does presume to produce messages and signs from spirits out of the dark, but they are usually so fragmentary and unintelligible, if not actually deceptive, that they lead their followers away from rather than to the truth. In these visions, on the other hand, I see vividly and clearly every detail of the glory of the spiritual world, and I have the uplifting experience of very real fellowship with the saints and the inconceivable bright and beautiful surroundings of a spiritual world made visible. It is from these angels and saints that I have received, not vague, broken, and elusive messages, from the unseen, but clear and rational elusive elucidation of many of the problems that have troubled me. This, quote, communion of the saints, quote, was a fact so real in the experience of the early church that it has given a place among the necessary articles of their faith, as stated in the, quote, Apostles' Creed, unquote. Once in a vision, I asked the saints for a proof from the Bible of this communion of saints and was told that it was to be found clearly given in Zechariah 3, verses 7 and 8, where, quote, those, those that were standing by were not angels nor men of flesh and blood, but saints in glory. And God's promise on condition of Joshua fulfilling his command is that he will be given, quote, a place of access to walk among them saints that stand by, unquote. And these are his fellows in the spirit of men made perfect with whom he could commune. There is repeated mention of spirits, saints, and angels in his book. The distinction I would make between them is that spirits are both good and bad, who after death exist in a state of intermediate between heaven and earth. Saints are those who have passed on through this stage into the higher sphere of the spiritual world and have had special service allotted to them. Angels are these glorious beings to whom all kinds of superior service has been allotted and among them are included many saints from other worlds as well as from this world of ours who all live together as one family. They serve one another in love and the if you Effulgent of God's glory are eternally happy. The world of spirits means that intermediate state into which spirits enter after leaving the body. But the spiritual world is meant all spiritual beings that progress through the stages between the darkness of the bottomless pit and the throne of the Lord in light. I wish to express my sincere thanks to the Reverend T.E. Riddle of the New Zealand Presbyterian Mission, K-H-A-R-A-R, Punjab, who has journeyed up to 
S-A-B-A-T-H-U, to translate this book from U-R-D-U into English. My thanks are again due to Miss E. Sanders of Coventry for having corrected the proofs of this book. Sundar Singh, S-U-B-A-T-H-U, July 1926.